This is the Parblo Coast 13. It is a 13 inch drawing display that you can plug into a Windows or a Mac computer. This is a review unit. It was provided to me by the folks over at Parblo. Now this device compares favorably to say the Wacom Cintiq 13, which is the older version of the Cintiq Pro tablets that came out earlier this year. It also compares really well to the Artisol D13. In fact, this tablet reminds me a lot of using the Artisol D13, so much so that if you covered up the logos, it would be hard to tell them apart. Now being compared Compared to the Artisol is not a bad thing. I really like the Artisol. It's like if you're a Santa, you're gonna wanna be compared to the friendly claymation Santa in the Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer cartoons, not the Billy Bob Thornton Santa. And no, I don't think it's too soon to be talking about Christmas. The screen looks good. It's a full HD, 1920 pixels by 1080 pixels, and on a 13 inch screen, that looks really crisp when you're looking down at it. To me, the colors look good right out of the box. I also thought the viewing angles were pretty good too. As expected, there is some parallax on the screen. That is where the the pen tip touches the screen and the cursor itself is displaced a little bit from that pen tip, this is to be expected on this kind of drawing tablet. And it's definitely on par with pretty much everything else I've tested. As far as the positioning of the tablet itself, it doesn't come with a stand. I personally was putting it out on the Artisol stand when I was using it, and that worked really well for me. I think that if you were interested in using something like this, I would definitely recommend picking up a $40 or $50 stand on Amazon. That's just me, I am an old guy, and if I look straight down at a tablet all day, my neck is gonna hurt, and I don't want my neck to hurt, I wanna draw on an angle. Although it is pretty light. So I did find myself propping my feet up on my desk, setting it on my lap. It only comes with one cord that's about two feet long, so it, it worked pretty well for that. It's pretty convenient. Oh yeah, about that one cord thing. Well, it's kind of one cord. See, instead of having like a power brick and a monitor cord and a USB cord like most of these tablets have, the Parblo gets its power from the USB cable. And then to make it simpler, they have kind of melded together the USB cable with the HDMI cable. Now this keeps your desk a lot cleaner, makes this thing easier to move around, but there is one notable downside. Since the cables are merged, if your HDMI port is too far away from your USB port, you're out of luck. They both need to be on the same same side of your laptop or within six inches of each other on your computer. If they aren't, I guess you could rip the cord apart and buy yourself a couple more inches or you're going to be left having to purchase your own connectivity cables separately. Like Wacom's pen, this one doesn't take a battery or even need recharging. The pen works really well. It passes all my standard tests. There's a very slight wobble on the slower strokes that I didn't find as disruptive as some of the other Wacom competitors that I have used. I like to draw a lot of hash lines, does that well. It holds pressure really well. It feels good to just hold in your hand. I like pens with a rubbery grip. They just feel better to me. This does not have this. This has a uh, plastic grip. But I will say this, after using it for a few minutes, I totally forgot about that. It's really well weighted. Sometimes if a pen is too light or too thin, I find myself gripping it too hard. But I took to this really quickly. It felt very natural to use. A good stylus is one that you don't notice once you start drawing with it, and that's what happened with this one. And for all you eraser heads out there, there is an eraser at the end of this pen. Not something that I use, but most Wacom alternatives don't have that. There's also a button along the side of the pen, which is pretty standard. There is only one button, not two buttons like you get on some pens, however. I also like how the button feels. You're not gonna accidentally press it. Sometimes when I use these pens, I find myself like tilting it a little and accidentally pressing that button. This one's indented a little more, so you really have to kind of firmly press it to make it happen. This is all my long-winded way of saying I like the stylus. It also comes with this handy case and a couple extra nibs to boot. Since we're talking about the pen, let's talk about the initial activation force. Most of the Wacom alternatives out there that I have tried need more pressure in order to activate the pen when it first touches the surface of the screen. This is normal for most battery powered pens. Because this isn't a battery powered pen, I was hoping that it would be more on par with Wacom, but it's not. It's a lot like all of the other Wacom alternative pens out there. So if you're a light sketcher, just be aware of that, that it's gonna take a little more activation than you may want in order to get this pen going. For most people, you're not even gonna notice. You can adjust the pressure curve in the settings of this app, whether you're on a Mac or a PC, and adjusting that pressure curve does help that a little bit, but, but not a ton. Speaking of settings, you can customize the hotkey that are located along the side of the tablet. It does have a click wheel, which is good for zooming and changing brush sizes. It's a little bit stiff. This is good and bad. You won't zoom in too far or too fast, which happens a lot with these kind of tablets. However, you might not be able to zoom in as quickly or change your brush size 
exercise as quickly as you want to. The only real downside I came across while I was using this tablet is probably one that you may have just noticed in the video. So this weird thing happened when I first got it, I installed it on my Mac, worked great. I was playing with the settings, everything was going well. I started drawing with it, I liked it. I got it set up in Windows, same thing. Drew with it, worked really well. Then I moved back to my Mac to actually film for this video and I ran into some technical problems. I couldn't get any of the settings to reload or anything like that. I couldn't actually get to the settings. And so I uninstalled and reinstalled the drivers and still couldn't get to the settings, but I could draw with it. But from time to time, I would get this blinky screen thing where every so often the screen would just cut out. I don't know if this is a problem with the drivers or if it's me personally, uh, I, I should say that I have installed dozens of tablets on my Mac. And so I fight with drivers probably more than the average person. Parblo recommends that you uninstall all other drawing tablet drivers before you install this, which I did, but still there are conflicts that occur and I understand that and I am an edge case, so I'm not sure if this is something that's going to occur for you or not, but I figured since it's actually showing in the video, I, I should probably mention it. So that is the Parblo Coast 13. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down in the comment section below. I would like to thank everybody who supports this channel over on Patreon. It is so appreciated. Also, another way to support me is check out my website. Uh, I take this tablet, I compare it to some of the other tablets that are out there. You can see some of my other reviews that I put together and some other people's reviews as well on there. So that link is down in the description as well. That's all I've got for this week. I will see you guys in a few days.